All right, I'm gonna show you how to make an easy sprint in Godot 4 Plus. This is a Patreon request, so let's go ahead and get started. So following my previous tutorial where I created my coin counter and also my character movement, I have this player character of the simple Grim Reaper that I downloaded from Final Boss Blues. It's a free asset, I'll link it below. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my game scene and I hit the label for my coin counter that I created previously. And I'm also hiding the coins because I don't need that for this tutorial. So in order to make a player character actually just sprint, I'm gonna go over to the top of my character body 2D and I'm gonna set a walk speed. So I'm gonna define bar walk speed is equal to 100. And now under my physics process where I set my direction to get inputs of move left, move right, move up, move down, right under my move and slide, I'm simply just gonna check if the sprint is held down. So I'm gonna write if input dot is action pressed. And now I need to make an action called sprint. But if this is held down, then I'm gonna set my max speed is gonna be my sprint speed. And I'm gonna just set the sprint speed to 300. And then I'll create an else. If we're not pressing the sprint down, then we're just gonna set the max speed is to, gonna be walk speed, which is also gonna be just our normal speed. So now I'm gonna head over to project settings and then I need to create a new action and I'll call this sprint, hit enter to add this over and I'll click the plus sign on the right of this. And I'll just click left shift on my keyboard like so and click okay. And that's pretty much it. Super easy, very easy to do in Godot. And now when I go over to my game and hit play, you're gonna notice that my character, this is the regular walk speed. While I'm holding left shift, I'm speeding up quite a lot to three times faster. Then when I let go, it's gonna go back to the walk speed. And now you're probably thinking, what if you wanna set this on a timer? Well, that's also really easy to do in Godot. So I'm gonna head over to my, my script and in my if statement, where I have this if input action press sprint, then I am gonna leave the max speed is equal to sprint speed, but I can actually delete this else part to set it back when I let go. And so what I'm gonna do is head over to my player scene and while player is selected, I'm gonna hit control A and look for a timer. And with my timer selected on the right, you'll see the inspector tab where it has wait time, auto start, and so on. There's a process callback and I'll just leave everything as is. So I'll leave my wait time to something like two seconds because this is what's gonna determine how long you're gonna be sprinting for. And I'm gonna head over to node and there's something called a timeout. I can double click this and actually attach this to my player to create this function called on timer timeout and hit connect. And now whenever I connect, you'll see this function appear at the bottom of my script in my player.gd. And essentially what I'm gonna do is that max speed is equal to walk speed. We got rid of over here under the else statement. I'm just gonna set that over here. So I'm gonna set max speed is equal to walk speed like so. So now every time I click shift, I also want this timer to start. So I just wanna get this node called timer and actually start it up. So I'm gonna type in get node and then in quotes, I will call the timer function. And then I'll simply do a dot start like so. Let's add some print functions to output it to the console so we know when it begins. So I'll simply print out begin sprinting over here, and then I'll copy this print function and on my timer timeout, I'm gonna print out end sprinting like so. And we can actually go ahead and test this out. So I'll click play and now, actually I won't full screen this because I wanna see my output. When I walk and hit shift, which is my sprint button, it'll say begin sprinting. And then when it stops, it'll say end sprinting like so. So I'll begin it again and it ends, and then I'll begin again, and it ends, and it'll sprint for the duration of this timer. And that's just in case you wanted some sort of boost on your vehicle or whatever, or if it's a skill and so on. So it's for two seconds. So let me do something like a 0 0.05 and let me change the sprint speed to something like 3000. So this might give it more of a teleport effect. So now when I, when I sprint or teleport, you might be able to tell that it's going very, very, very fast. So this is probably more noticeable. So you can see how fast my character is shifting in and out of the map. And that would create a more of a teleport or a super dash effect. And maybe I could set it up even faster and make the time even shorter, just so that it could feel more like a teleport. And you can even add some animations to play or particles to happen whenever you click the shift button. So I'm gonna go ahead and change sprint speed to three and I'll actually get rid of the timer and go back to how it was before. So I'll add that else. So I got rid of the function at the bottom and over here I added that else statement where it says max speed is equal to walk speed. So it's gonna be back to that while we're holding down the sprint button and I set my variables back to normal. All right, and now what if you wanted to add a simple stamina system? So all I need to do is just head back to my player scene. I'm gonna click on player and I'm simply just gonna add a label. 
I'm going to rename this to stamina label. And now for the text, I'm going to type in stamina colon, and then I'll just enter a space and I'll just put 100 because that's going to be my default stamina. And then I'm going to anchor this to let's do the center right below my character. It's totally fine. Or actually, you know what? I'll put this right above and you can really anchor this wherever you want. And now in my script, I am going to create some stamina settings. So I'll keep it over here just so it's more organized. So under stamina, I'm going to create a var max stamina is equal to 100 var stamina is equal to 100. This is just to initialize and this will be our current stamina that actually matters for our character. This will change over time and this will be what's going to be represented in the stamina label. And let's add some sort of system where our stamina reduces every time we sprint. So I'm going to do a var stamina drain is equal to five like so. And now with stamina label selected, I'm going to drag this over. And before I let go, I'm going to hold control while I hold left control. I'm going to drag this and now it'll automatically create this on ready var stamina labels label is equal to dollar sign stamina label. And I'll go ahead and click save. And now I'll scroll down in my physics process function and where it says our input action or our is action press sprint. I'm before the colon, I'm going to add a and stamina greater than zero. And then under the max speed, it's equal to sprint speed. So basically while we're going at our sprint speed, I'm going to drain our stamina. So stamina will be minus equal to stamina drain times delta because we want this to decrease over time. Else our max speed will now be set to our walk speed. And let's say I wanna add some mana region, which will be very simple to do. I'm gonna write in if stamina is less than max stamina, then stamina, plus equals two, and let's just use the stamina drains times delta, just so we'll regen it at the max rate that we lose it while sprinting and while we're not sprinting. And max stamina will be our limiter because we don't wanna go over 100. And now I'm simply just gonna print this out. So I'm gonna scroll up, get the stamina label, and we need to set the text. So now, outside of the if else, I'm gonna do stamina label dot text because this is our text field. And also if you hover over it, it'll show you the property name. As it says property text, this is exactly what we need to modify is equal to, and then in quotes, I'm going to do stamina colon space. And now I'm going to concatenate the stamina function itself. Although if I just did stamina like this, it wouldn't work because we're trying to combine a string and an int. So what I need to do is convert this to a string like so. And now this will convert our integer to a string. So when I go ahead and hit play, you'll see our stamina showing above our character. And there's too many decimals, so I actually want to round this up. So let me go ahead and change that. So after our our string conversion, I'm going to do a round like so. And then I need two parentheses to close both of these off. And this will be good. So now it'll just be a whole number. So when I sprint, you'll see it decreasing this much. And then when I let go, I'm going to revert back to my walk speed and the number will go up and stop at 100. And yeah, pretty simple. One thing I love about Godot is that it is very easy to create a simple system like this. Uh, yeah, I'm in love with Godot now. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any requests on tutorials for Godot and I'll go ahead and make a video on it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.